Hi viewers, my name is Sirisha. Welcome to my channel Dream Life Diaries. In this video, I am going to talk about my experiences on 5th and 6th day of Kashmir and Leh trip. It mostly covers the amazing journey from Kashmir to Leh and Ladakh. On day 5, we all had breakfast in the morning sitting in the front balcony of the houseboat where you can enjoy the lake and mountain view. We checked out from Peacock Houseboat and thoroughly enjoyed the Shikara ride back to the Ghat. Day 5 was mostly spent in travelling from Srinagar to Kargil. As Leh is around 395 kilometers from Srinagar and most of the stretch is Ghat Road, you can't really make it to Leh in a single day. So Kargil is our stop between Srinagar and Leh. We stopped at Rajadaba which is close to Sonamark for lunch. From here onwards there won't be much greenery. It's mostly bare Himalayan range with or without snow. This was our last stop to enjoy the greenery in Kashmir. We crossed Sonamark on the way to Kargil. As we had to reach Kargil War Memorial by 5 pm in the evening, we didn't stop at Sonamark. But it mostly resembled Gulmark. Srinagar is at an altitude of 5,200 feet and Kargil is at an altitude of 8,780 feet. After Sonamark, we started moving high up the altitude until we reached Kargil. The road was pretty good until Sonamark. After that, it was all gravel or mud road most of the time as they are still in the process of laying it down. As we drove further, we were seeing bare Himalayas with snow, which was not the case back in Srinagar and Pahalgaon. Srinagar was pretty hot with poking sun and the temperature was around 26 to 28 degrees centigrade. Gulmarg and Pahalgaon were colder with temperature at 13 to 15 degrees centigrade. As we drove towards Kargil and Leh, it was getting colder and colder. You can see a lot of snow blocks like this on the roadside midway to Kargil. We were all very happy to see snow and snow blocks around. We reached the Kargil War Memorial 5 in the evening. The Kargil War Memorial also known as Dras War Memorial, is a war memorial built by the Indian Army in the town of Dras, commemorating the 1999 Kargil War between India and Pakistan. Operation Vijay It was the name of the Indian military operation to clear out the Kargil sector. The names of the soldiers who lost their lives in the war are inscribed on these memorials. There is also a museum within the premises which houses pictures of Indian soldiers, archives of important war documents and recordings and Pakistani war equipment used in the war. After visiting the war memorial, we headed towards the hotel. We stayed in Zojila residency in Kargil that night. I actually didn't have much expectations on the room and the hotel but surprisingly the room and the food were really good and beyond my expectations. It was pretty clean, spacious and very well maintained. It is one of the best hotels I had stayed so far. We were pretty tired by the time we reached the hotel. We had dinner and went to bed. On day 6, we resumed our journey towards Leh in Ladakh. On the way, we stopped at the famous Chamba statue on the outskirts of Mulbek village along the Kargil Leh National Highway. The statue is several meters tall and carved on a large boulder on the side of the road. It depicts a standing Maitreya Buddha or future Buddha. We spent some time at the statue 
and resumed our journey towards Leh. Throughout the journey from Kargil to Leh, the landscape is pretty much covered like this with sand dunes with a little bit of greenery. And then we stopped at Namikala Pass. It's a high mountain pass located at a height of 12,198 feet along the Srinagar Leh Highway. It's one of the highest passes between Leh and Kargil. It's a good place to stop and enjoy some photography. And then we reached another milestone which is at 13,479 feet high. These are all small but yeah, significant achievements. And then we stopped at Lamayuru Monastery. It's a Tibetan Buddhist monastery in Ladakh. You get to see lot of Buddhist monasteries in and around Ladakh. Lama Yuru is also known as Moonland of Ladakh. The terrain next to the monastery is stunning and incredible. And some say that the soil is similar to that on the moon, which justifies the name. It's an offbeat but easily accessible village in Ladakh, which is around 125 kilometers from Leh. The monastery houses many bright and vivid ancient paintings of the cardinal kings. Looks like it originally had five main buildings, but currently only one central building exists. Here is the interiors of the monastery. The best time to visit the Lama Yuru Monastery is during the celebration of the festival of Yuru Kabgyat, which is in July or August. Otherwise, the months from May to October in general is a perfect time to visit Lama Yuru because the weather is most favorable for traveling. We spent some time at the monastery, had lunch and resumed our journey towards Lake. And then we stopped at Sangam, which is the confluence of Indus and Zanskar rivers in Ladakh. The two rivers can be separately seen meeting at this point. While the Indus river appears as shiny blue, Zanskar river appears muddy green. And then we stopped at Magnetic Hill, which is located at 26 kilometers from Leh. The hill road is actually a downhill road. But the cars on the hill road may appear to roll uphill when they are in fact rolling downhill. The driver poured some water on the road and we could actually make out that the water flowing downwards and it's actually a downhill road. We reached Leh at around 6 pm and checked into the hotel. We stayed at Grand Yasmin Hotel in Leh, which is very close, around 1 km from Leh Market. It turned out to be not so good hotel compared to all the other hotels I stayed during this trip. We checked into the room, freshen up and headed towards the Leh Market. Tibetan market in Leh is a flea market with a throng of stalls offering numerous Tibetan and Ladakhi souvenir options such as jewellery, Buddha idols, prayer wheels, etc. You can also find a wide variety of rings, earrings, necklaces, keychains and bracelets. Ladakh is also famous for its delicate and warm Pashima shawls made with pure Pashima wool. But you need to make sure that it's hallmarked for its authenticity. We spent some time at the market, went back to the hotel, had dinner and called it a day. I hope you enjoyed watching the video and got enough information. Stay tuned for my next and last video of this trip on experiences at Kardungla Pass, Nubra Valley and Pangong Lake.
If you like the video, please give a thumbs up, share it with your family and friends and add your comments to the comment section below. And do not forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon next to it to receive notifications for the upcoming videos. Thank you.